Hello, this is Al, K0CN, and I'd like to share with you the experience I had this summer while setting up my Heights 84-foot crank-up tower. The tower was ordered in February, but in fact we didn't receive it until November. I found a local contractor that was able to do most of the work regarding installation of the base and receiving the antenna. I received the materials for constructing the base in September and started by digging a hole that was determined by the manufacturer to be 10 and a half feet deep. So we started, as you see, with an excavator to dig a hole in the yard. We knew it was going to be rocky, but we had no idea the number of rocks and basketball-sized boulders that lie under the surface. All I can say is I'm sure glad we didn't try to do this by hand. The base that was specified for this tower was 10 and a half feet deep and 4 feet in diameter and a rebar cage used to reinforce the concrete. The hole that we ended up with was actually 11 feet deep and we used a 4 foot diameter sonotube. The use of the sonotube saved us several yards of concrete. Here we see the rebar cage being lowered into the sonotube. In addition to the cage, there were three hardened steel threaded rods, about seven feet long each, that were attached to the cage. These were held in place with a steel triangular template, which positioned the bolts during the concrete pouring process so that the tower can be mounted later when the concrete is cured. Next, we decided to install the grounding system for the tower. The grounding system consisted of three 10-foot long, 3 quarter inch diameter copper clad ground rods. A number 2 copper wire was then CAD welded to each of these grounding rods, forming a circle around the base and allowing for a lead that would lead to each leg of the tower. I decided to use a CAD weld system hoping for a better connection to the ground rods than could be achieved with simple clamps. With the rebar cage and the mounting bolts secured, we were ready to order the concrete. We determined that we needed about six yards of concrete, so we placed the order, and the truck arrived early the next morning. We were fortunate that the truck was able to drive up next to the hole and pour the concrete directly into the form. After the concrete was poured, we cleaned up the site, and the contractor spread out some black dirt that he had brought along. After a period of about 28 days, we were ready to mount the tower, however it still hadn't arrived. Finally, on a cold morning, November 20th, the tower arrived, and this is what the base looked like with the welded clevises installed. We had hoped for warm, sunny weather, but Mother Nature gave us a snowstorm and some record cold temperatures. I guess that's the way it goes. I was able to get my contractor back on site when the tower arrived for the offloading process. Using his bobcat, he started out by unloading the four-foot stand, which is part of the tilt-over fixture for this tower. Next, he came back for the tower itself. It was quite a balancing act, but he was able to move it smoothly without any problems. He maneuvered the tower up the driveway and placed it on the ground next to the base. Now to set up the tower. The first step was to attach the four foot stand. The stand is attached to the base using three clevises that are bolted to the rod sticking out of the concrete. Once the stand is attached, we carefully checked for level. Any adjustment that was needed was made by adjusting the nuts on the threaded rods that stick out of the concrete. Next, we added the hardware for the tilt-over fixture. There is a 7-foot long Acme screw 
that's about an inch and a quarter in diameter that is used to tilt the tower over and back up again. Once the hardware was in place, we attached the motor. And finally, when all the hardware was attached to the four-foot stand, the Acme screw was then attached to the tower itself. As you can see here, the tower is pinned to the base and the front two legs act as hinges so the tower can tilt over and back up again. Now with the tilt-over fixture assembled and the tower attached, it's now time for the moment of truth. I threw the switch and the motor came to life. The Acme screw started to turn and the tower started to rise up. The motor supplied with the tilt-over fixture is a geared down motor and the Acme screw turns at a rate that takes about 10 or 11 minutes for the tower to go from horizontal to vertical. Once the tower was vertical, the next step was to add the winch. The winch attaches to the four-foot base stand and is a separate electrical device. The cable from the first section of the tower attaches to the drum of the winch and as the drum turns, the tower then either cranks up or down depending on the direction of rotation. It takes a little less than two minutes for the tower to go from its nested position to full height. The total height of this tower is 89 feet, including the four-foot stand used for the tilt-over fixture. One of the nice features of this tower is that it has a brake system on the bottom of the second section. When the tower is raised to full height, you can pull on a cable which extends three aluminum blocks that will sit on rest and can be used to support the antenna while it is fully extended, thus taking the tension off of the crank up cable. Well, here we are. The tower arrived this morning at about 8 o'clock and here it is at 1.30 that same day and we have the tower extended. A pretty incredible assembly process that went very, very smoothly. The next item for attention is to mount the antenna to the mast. The antenna being used here is the Step IR DB18E. It took about a day and a half for us to mount the antenna to the mast and check all the hardware, all the connections and fittings and support lines. Once that was done, we hit the switch and raised the tower to a vertical position. You can see here that we're using the NN4ZZ tilt plate which allows us to work on the antenna while our feet are on the ground. As the tower goes from horizontal to vertical, the antenna will rotate, keeping its elements horizontal throughout the process. This worked out very well, and we're all happy we didn't have to climb the tower to do any work. And the tilt plate worked perfectly as advertised. Well, that's about it. The entire project went without incident, and I must say I'm really happy with the results. Thanks a lot for watching. 73 from Al, K0CN.